Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a couple pieces of OpenAI news, the first being quite the tea. According to the information, OpenAI has fired two researchers for leaking sensitive information. The two researchers include Leopold Aschenbrenner and Pavel Ismailov. Both of these researchers have been on the team dedicated to AI alignment and safety research. And according to the information, Aschenbrenner was also an ally, their word, of OpenAI chief scientist Ilya Sutskever, who of course we have no idea where he actually is or what he's actually still doing with OpenAI. We also have no information about what the two allegedly leaked. Right now, it's all a big bucket of speculation. The information talks about Ashenbrenner's ties to the effective altruism movement, the most notorious proponent of, of course, being Sam Bankman Freed. And the intimation is that the leaks probably had something to do with the disagreement around how OpenAI was proceeding with regard to safety. But again, that's all speculation right now. Whether these two actually talk or if they just show up at a competing lab remains to be seen. But that is the story. Next up, earlier this week, OpenAI announced a more advanced GPT-4 Turbo with Vision model, but it was only available initially through the API. Well, now they've brought that new advanced model to ChatGPT. The company writes, Our new GPT-4 Turbo is now available to paid ChatGPT users. We've improved capabilities in writing, math, logical reasoning, and coding. For example, when writing with ChatGPT, responses will be more direct, less verbose, and use more conversational language. We continue to invest in making our models better and look forward to seeing what you can do. So the example they give of it being less verbose, the prompt was SMS reminding friends to RSVP to my birthday dinner invite. The previous response was, hey, friend's name, just checking in to see if you've had a chance to RSVP for my birthday dinner. I'm finalizing the table reservation and really hope you can make it. It wouldn't be the same without you. Please let me know by RSVP deadline. Looking forward to celebrating together. The new response is, hey, friend's name, just a friendly reminder to RSVP for my birthday dinner. Hope you can make it. Let me know soon. Now, of course, the proof is in the pudding. And so far, I've seen a lot of people say that this does feel like GPT-4 is now once again caught up with what they were seeing with Claude 3 Opus. There's some disagreement around whether that's the case with coding, but I've seen some people talk about how the coding has gotten significantly better as well. Of course, there is a larger question, which is why we're only getting these very incremental improvements rather than some big model launch, and a lot of speculation that OpenAI is still very much holding things back. Next on the brief, Amazon has added well-known computer scientist Andrew Ng to its board. Andrew is an extremely well-known figure in the AI space, having led projects at Google and Baidu, and seemingly showing that Amazon is here to compete in this area. Finally, the Humane AI pin is getting lots of reviews, and they're not all that great. For example, The Verge's review is called Humane AI Pin Review, not even close. For $6.99 and $24 a month, this wearable computer promises to free you from your smartphone. There's only one problem. It just doesn't work. The reviewer writes, I came into this review with two big questions about the AI pin. The first is the big picture one. Is this thing anything? In just shy of two weeks of testing, I've come to realize that there are, in fact, a lot of things for which my phone actually sucks. Often all I want to do is check the time or write something down or text my wife, and I end up sucked in by TikTok or my email or whatever unwanted notification is sitting there on my screen. Plus, have you ever thought about how often your hands are occupied with groceries, clothes, leashes, children, steering wheels, and how annoying slash unsafe it is to try to balance your phone at the same time? I've learned I do lots of things on my phone that I might like to do somewhere else. So yeah, that is something. Maybe something big. AI models aren't good enough to handle everything yet, but I've seen glimmers of what's coming and I'm optimistic about the future. That raises the second question. Should you buy this thing? That one's easy. Nope. Nuh-uh. No way. The AI pin is an interesting idea that is so thoroughly unfinished and so totally broken in so many unacceptable ways that I can't think of anyone to whom I'd recommend spending the $6.99 for the device and the 24 monthly subscription. Now, there really was not just one nasty reviewer. There were a bunch of people who said something similar. However, for a more generous and let's call it historical point of view, I'll read this tweet from investor Khaled Jalanbo who writes, With AI pin, Humane will go down in history as the company that created the world's first ever AI computer. Yet, as history proves, version 1.0 is just the beginning of a founder's vision. Those who understand what it takes applaud entrepreneurs that have the guts and imagination to challenge giants, rather than scrutinize them like they're already trillion-dollar megacaps. The humane team are pioneers that catalyze the conversation around how we apply AI in consumer hardware. And that, in itself, merits recognition and respect. I think that's a great way to put it, and very clearly we are at the beginning of a flowering of new, interesting experiments when it comes to AI hardware. Who knows where that will all land? That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI breakdown. 